So I'm gonna show you how this boots up on the first time. So I went through and created the SD card, and then you set all the settings, copy a file in, unzip it, have to edit config text and first run.sh. So this is just a quick hack together example of this uh, system. Obviously the buttons look a little bit wonky and stuff. It's not even all closed up. Um, I don't need those. You really need to make sure that your ribbon cable is plugged in here. It's all screwed together so I can't really show you that, but also that this ribbon cable is plugged in. That's really important for the joystick portion. So we're going to pop the SD card in there. All right, I took a pause there. I need to show you this. When you first plug in the battery, it won't do anything and you'll think that there's a problem. This is like a safety feature for the battery charging. Uh, but you need to plug in the USB-C charger once. The battery actually doesn't have to be connected for it to boot up, but the battery charger has to be plugged in one time, and then after that, everything's enabled. So we can boot it up now. Remember, this is the first boot right after the SD card was imaged. Right now, I did not set it up to use this viewport, so it's gonna look a little bit wonky. All right, you saw the screen was a little bit weird there. Um, that's because this, the LCD is actually larger than the viewport that you can see here. You notice that, yeah, it's larger than what you have available with this shell and this lens. So in the config text in that boot directory, there's some options for setting overscan values. So I just enabled those and we'll reboot it here. So the first time we booted up, it um, resized the partition to use the whole SD card. So now it's gonna go through a bunch of first run stuff. And now you can see that everything kind of fits on the screen better. I don't know if the angle of this is quite right, but I think it's all right. So after it resizes the partition on the next boot up, one of the things it does is it checks the file system. Um, this is on a Pi Zero 2. It's faster than the Pi Zero on the Pi Zero. And that file system check takes a bit longer. So we can go through all this. And this is all first run stuff. Shuts itself down again. Boot it back up one more time. You have to hold the power button in until that green LED comes on. Then you can let go of the power button. You notice that green LED coincides with Linux starting up. No, this is the third time this machine has been booted up. And it should be starting the free play joystick driver here in a moment. Again, these first boots are a little bit slower than normal it's doing a lot of one-time operation stuff. So now the firmware on the joystick didn't match what it was looking for. So it updated it. You saw that it went green and it kind of will flicker a bit when it's uploading. And you can skip some of this stuff if you wanted to by tapping the power button, but what it just did there is it uploaded a new firmware to the joystick driver chip and now it's going to reboot again. Um, that would only happen if there's a mismatch so I had an old version of the firmware on here and you notice when the screen went like a little bit green 
and it looked a little bit wavy while it was uploading the firmware. That's because the lines that it uses to write the firmware are normally used to run the LCD, but in that case, when we need to upload a new firmware, it takes those lines away from the LCD and uses them for the firmware update. So that doesn't happen very often, only when there's, if you would upload a new driver package and then the new driver package has a new firmware, then it'll send that to it. So now we get to this screen. This is only gonna happen typically on the first boot up. And this screen helps you set up the analog sticks, but we're not using analog sticks here. But for each of these, you can go through and try to detect like the, the min max of the different axes. But right now we are only doing digital, so we can hit down, 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 all the way down to skip and then hit A. And that shouldn't come up again, but if you want that to come up again, like if you do add an analog stick later or something like that, then you can hold down the start button during boot up and then you should get that again. So now the first time we finally get into RetroPie, it says one gamepad detected. So you hold the button and then you go through all this, up, down, left, right, start, select, A, B, X, Y, shoulders. We don't have L2 and R2 on here, but we could have. And, but now we get to the point where we want to skip things. So it's a little bit cumbersome to skip all these, but that's how the system works. And again, this is another one-time setup thing, but you can always come and redo these if you change. Now, whoops. When we get to hotkey, what we want to do is double tap the power button, and that's going to let us use the power button as a hotkey. So, say we want to exit an emulator, you tap and release the power button, and then hit start. So that then it goes into hotkey mode, and you can tell it's in hotkey mode because this LED will turn blue, and Anyway, then I was just hitting OK because I hadn't done that after talking. So I can show you the hotkey mode just real quick, but it won't do anything here. So you know the LED goes blue, and then we hit start. Now it registered that as a start because there's no hotkey function for this menu. But if you're in an emulator, that's how you'd exit. You'd tap and release and then hit start for most emulators. And that's it. There's also now a RetroPie menu. Oh, I should show you this. On the first boot up, what I would do, it does install another theme. So I would definitely recommend going down here and choosing the free play theme. I think it looks a lot better on the LCDs. Um, the transition style, better for instant, I think. And the quick system select, I really don't like that. So we go back. So now we have a nicer looking theme. And then I just wanted to show you in here. Right now, free play configuration doesn't really do anything. Um, that's there for future updates if we need to do the configuration stuff. But the free play joystick driver update is good if there's a new driver package that got released. But now you're kind of free to start adding your ROMs. We recommend doing it with the USB drive. Um, but that's basically it, and it's set up to go. You can try, I'll show you one time. Uh, the regular boot up should work. Now that we're done with all those one time boot ups configurations. And let's see. Let's see, you get a nice uh, reflection of my Ash Ketchum sticker on the back of my phone. Should have been uh, back here like this.